morning everyone I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to go over all of the yarn that we dyed as part of the February Chemnitz dye along live stream. Last month I took this gorgeous flamingo picture and used it to inspire really two different colorways of yarn but we also swatched a bunch of pinks and took a look at what some of these colors would look like so that way I could pick the right pinks to use in dry powder form for this project. Now, I think that this particular live stream was also a good example of how sometimes when you might have a vision of how you might want to apply the dye to the yarn, but once you see what the colors are doing on the yarn and how that's going, you might change your mind. So I really thought that I was going to dissolve uh, some of these colors into liquid and then apply that way, but we ended up using dry powder applications for all three of these colorways. Here are the dry samples of those crude swatches that I did at the beginning. One reason why I like to swatch colors with dry powder is that it can give you some information about the intensity of different powders that is a type of information that you don't necessarily get if you dissolve the dye and are using similar concentrations of each of the color. Because some things that are a pastel at a 1% depth of shade might still pack quite a punch when you use the dry powder. And this time was specifically unique because I didn't add more dye after doing these crude swatches, which means we can look at them dry. This yarn base is Twill from Knit Picks, which is 100% Superwash Merino. It's really bouncy, high twist, and I really like it. Here we have some Antique Mauve, Peach Blush, Tangelo. Then we have Flamingo Pink, Ballerina Pink, and finally, Valentine Pink, which is an extremely interesting color. And then over here, we have some hints of the uh, Ballerina Pink. I wanted to see that a little more pastel. And of this, the colors that really ended up speaking to me and that I used were Flamingo Pink, because it made sense, given our inspiration, Tangelo for some of that orange on the beak. I think that Peach Blush probably would have worked well, but this did give a nice little punch. And then finally, I used a little bit of this uh, Valentine Blush, which is a color I've used in, in the past, and it gives off this speckle in addition to the color being fair, a fairly soft pink. At some point, I tried to do a really soft yellow, pink, and green colorway, and I don't know if I would call this breaking as much as some of the color takes a while to dissolve for the Valentine blush and it leaves these extremely sharp, deep, 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 deep pink, not quite black, but a very, very saturated color specks, uh, even as you try to move the color through. And I'm pointing this out here uh, because let's go look at the colorway. Starting with 400 grams of Knit Picks Hawthorne, which is 80% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% polyamide, I layered on flamingo pink and this uh, Valentine blush all over, uh, sort of randomly giving us this soft pink base. And then with the Tangelo, I roughly speckled it on. I did this with a reasonable amount of acid, but with no heat. I did this all cool. Let the yarn sit for five minutes, then flipped and did this again and again. And the end result is that we have these really, really soft, almost feather-like speckles because the Tangelo was able to spread a tiny bit, but just add like a little bit of depth into the colorway. Now, you remember those Valentine blush speckles? I'm not sure you can really even see them yet on camera. I can't tell if my lens is a little dirty or if you can see them. But there are these tiny, almost pepper-like specks on here from the Valentine blush. You can see our Tangelo specks that are so subtle because it's this orangey pink on top of a pink background. But if we zoom in further, you can see these tiny, tiny speckles on here that are 
all over and not very dense. And if I look really closely at them, here's one area where it's a little darker. It is a pink. It's almost sort of that mauve color. It's a very, very deep purple pink and is not something that showed up really until the yarn was dry. I didn't really even notice it until the yarn was dry. Now, this is something that might make some of you really, really happy because I know the temptation to speckle black on here was really, really high. Uh, there's black and deep green, and part of me wanted to do that, but I also really, really appreciated the softness here in this yarn. And even with those hints of speckles, I still really like it. Uh, it is something that I would l knit with in a heartbeat, but also I haven't done something quite like this where I've tried to speckle and intentionally keep the speckles so unbelievably subtle. So I would love to explore this more in the future and just had an absolute blast with this colorway. And finally, I wanted to have some fun with that black and deep green from our inspiration photo. So I took flamingo pink tangelo and intended to do, I was going to use dry powder, but I was going to do it heavy splotches, similar to my mystical forest colorway or my Halloween colorway this year. But as soon as I layered on the flamingo pink and saw the heavy speckles with the wash of pink that I got, I loved it. And so therefore I did heavy pink speckles, some hints of tan jello, and then uh, some pops of forest green and true black. I'm not sure if I feel flamingo in here, but I definitely wanted to play with this color combination. And this twill yarn base is so dense and the twist is so high that it is so good for speckles. And I wasn't even going for sharp speckles. I was using straight dry powder. I didn't mix with citric acid, but I just love the results. Twisted up, you can see some of these little micro speckles really well, in addition to the tangel to the Tangelo splotches. Now it's my favorite time of the Chemnitz dye-along, and it's time for me to feature some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. There are so many different ways to play with pink, and looking at the photo, you could focus on just the feather of the birds, on the overall picture, including the background, the legs of the birds, or that contrast on in the beak. There are so many different ways that you could play with the colors in this photo to have something that evokes these majestic birds. If you would like to participate in future Chemnitz Dialogues and get submitted er, and potentially get featured in these recaps, uh, you can share the yarn that you dyed on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue. Uh, if you post the yarn after I've released the recap from the previous month, just mention what month you were inspired by. Just give the date in there. Uh, and you can share your photos in a photo comment on the inspiration photo on the public Chemnitz Facebook page. And I love seeing everyone's different interpretation, whether you want to go and try the exact technique I do in the live stream, or if you want to do something completely different. Uh, there are so many fun ways to play with these pictures, and I just love seeing how different dyers interpret a photo and create some gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. So thank you again to everyone who has died along with me at home and to everyone who joined in the live stream and helped me make decisions on the fly. I'm assuming that by the time I've released this video, I have already picked an inspiration photo for March 2021. But if you have an idea for a theme, um, a species of bird or flower that maybe I should take a look at, um, or some other concept that isn't based on nature, uh, I tend to draw from nature photos a lot. <laughs> Uh, please let me know uh, down in the comments what you think that I should look for. I do have a secret Pinterest board of pictures that really inspire me color-wise, and so I'm always collecting things, even if it's not something that I would use right away. I might uh, go and do some deep dives based on your suggestions uh, to add things to my inspiration board. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and have your notifications on. Uh, 
Most of the time I schedule live streams in advance, but sometimes I go live with very little notice. And if your notifications are on and you allow push notifications on your app, then YouTube can let you know when I've started a live stream. And so then you can hang out in real time, ask questions. Uh, sometimes I ask chat to pick the next step or help me decide what to do with the colorway. And I really just love getting that real time live feedback and it is a lot of fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.